Hello, Olympia Tech, and welcome back to the character modeling tutorial in Blender in the style of anime. No pleasantries required. Y'all know it's what. We're going to jump right into it today with a loop cut. A loop cut is just a fundamental function of 3D modeling. It's just something that you're, you're going to have to know how to do, what it is, and how to do it and why it's important. And we use loop cuts in 3D modeling in 3D uh, to create more geometry. Okay, so if we look at, at our composition right now, we'll look at it in solid mode. There's, you know, a dozen or so uh, vertices and a half dozen faces and, you know, however many edges, okay? If we wanna add more geometry to that, we can do so by hitting Control-R. Okay, and that is the hotkey for loop cuts. Now, if you don't like hotkeys or shortcuts for whatever reason, don't know why, but say they weird you out, uh, I'm just gonna say one, get over that. Uh, you need to embrace hotkeys, they save time, because if you're doing you know, 50 loop cuts, uh, you're going to, and you, and you want to click the icon, which you can, because it's also over here, okay? So this is a loop cut in the tools section. Here's your loop cut. So you can click loop cut here, or if you like shortcuts and hotkeys, which you definitely do, okay? You want to get good at those, we hit control R, and then we'll see this line pop up. Now this is a preview. This is not a finalized thing on our model. It just shows us what a loop cut would look like if we wanted to. Uh, would loop cut wood cut wood okay <sighs> how many cuts would a loop cut cut if a loop cut could cut wood yeah i went there um so also one thing to note if you need this to be horizontal just drag your mouse down a little bit and uh, that happens automatically okay so if you want to make a horizontal loop cut just bring your mouse down and if you want to make a vertical loop cut just move your mouse and it makes that adjustment automatically. Now, if that's not clear uh, what I was saying to you, then you can always RTFM, which is fun computer language for read the fucking manual, okay? Uh, the manual, the docs are your friend, okay? People, especially in the open source community, you want someone to use your software, you want someone to really embrace your system, you gotta let them know how to use it, okay? So fortunately, I already have TFM already up uh, let's go over here, and this is the Blender manual. I'll put a link to this in the description, okay? So, again, here's your hotkey. Kind of lets you know what's what. This is, um, if you haven't been to the Blender manual, you should go. If you have a question about something, check it out. You'll figure out how to do it and the shortcuts involved. This is the sentence that kind of describes it, okay? So a loop cut splits a loop of faces by inserting new edge loops intersecting chosen edge which is just a, a fancy way of saying it adds more geometry to your model and here's an example so say here's a cube that you start with and then we hit control r or the icon for loop cuts if you don't like shortcuts or hotkeys which don't know why that would be embrace the hotkeys y'all so here's that preview of the section and then once we hit enter or click it makes it real and it is now a part of our model, okay? So these vertices are vertices that you can mess with on your model. These edges are edges that you can alter on your model, okay? Where, the, where before there was one face here, now there's two faces, okay? We have increased the total amount of geometry that we have in our model. The loop cut is your friend. It is, a, it is a tool that you want to have in your belt. So we're gonna mess with loop cuts today. So that is what a loop cut is, and that's how you use it. So let's show you an example. Okay, so we have a loop cut here. If I click and let go, if I click and drag, see? Look at this. If I just click and drag. Now, when I use the hotkey, I can just click and drag. If I don't want this, I just escape out of it and it goes back to where it was originally. So I want to get rid of this with Control Z. That's how we undo. Now, one, one difference is that if I go here and click the icon, 
click and let go, it's automatically there and it goes to prompt another one. Okay, so this is one difference between using the hotkey. Hotkey doesn't have this problem, but the icon button does. So I'm going to control Z out of that and then go to select box. I'm going to hit control R hotkey for loop cut. And then I'm going to click and I'm going to drag in. And I'm going to bring it all the way in to this line right there. Okay. Now let's click on our properties and clipping is off right now. If you have clipping on, turn it off. It's wrench properties, modifier properties right here. It's the wrench clipping is off. Okay. So that means if clipping was on, we wouldn't be able to pull that line away from the center line, but we want to be able to pull that line away from the center line. So clipping is off. Okay. Are you with me? Excellent. So with clipping off, we're going to pull our loop cut off of the center axis and create the bridge of the nose. So we're going to click the move button up here. You could also hit G for grab. And then I'm going to along the X axis. I'm just going to bring this out. Now you can bring it really wide out. If you want to give your character a giant nose, you bring it over here. If you want to bring your, give your character a tiny little bridge of the nose, then you bring it in like this. Okay. Really kind of, kind of simple, kind of quick and easy. Okay. Then we want to bring it in along the Y axis. Okay. So we're, we're going to try it. We're going to move around with middle mouse. We're going to move around our model and find the Y axis and take it back a little bit, just a little bit. Okay. Now see what we've done. Do you see we're kind of giving the bridge of our nose some form, some shape and some form, and it's starting to reveal itself in three dimensional space. Now, again, you can, you can make it however long you want to make it, however big you want to make it, however thick, thin, wide, deep. This is, this is up to you. You can play around with it. Um, the anime face and style really is kind of a, there's kind of a template to it. So if you want to keep it as anime ish as possible and just do the Ni Huang template model, then, you know, then keep it as close to uh, the knee template as possible. Okay, let's add another loop cut in here. Control R, another loop cut. Okay, I'm gonna click and bring it over a little bit to where the dot in the pupil is in is in a little like where the white hits that crescent moon right here. That is kind of where we want to be. And if it's a little too far to the left or to the right, that's totally fine. You can very easily remember. Look, if you just grab this arrow and move it, you can you can move the whole thing. All right, so get about there. Now we have to create kind of a reference point for the front to match up with the side. So imagine that this is a vertical line right here at the back of the eye. We're going to hit numpad three, go into side mode, side view, go into side view. And you can see this back here is now, you know, this is not where we need it to be. We need this to be a little bit behind the eye, like so, like that. Okay. And now we're building out the cheekbone which is you can kind of see the, the cheek is starting to pop out but these three vertices are a little too far out so we want to bring these back a little bit okay okay you call it like that and bring this here So now we're kind of, this is going to be the thing that rounds out the cheek around the face. And then we'll bring one in here, another one, control R for, uh, rounding out the bridge of the nose. We'll bring that in like, so like that, maybe a little more 
in. Okay, let's flip around to front view with numpad one. Okay, and see see how we're looking. So this is a little, we might need this to be a little closer to the nose. Yeah, it's gonna be much closer to the nose. Um, let's run out the cheek first. So if you wanna select all of these, so I can select one here and then one here and then one here, or I could hit shift, select, and that picks them one at a time. But if you wanna get all of them, hit alt. Okay, an alt click selects a whole line, vertices and edges, and then we're just going to drag this almost to the side of the face, and there we go. There's now we're creating the roundness of a cheek. Okay, so when we pop out of this, you're going to see some form happening, which is, you know, cool. Okay, now let's bring this in, and we'll hit alt click. And we'll bring this in and, and just essentially just make the nose, all right? And I mean, you can see even right there how that really kind of looks like that. Just it's got that it's got the beginnings of uh, of that anime template, right? Okay, so let's take a look at what we what we've done. So you see, our nose is really starting to take form, okay? And we've created the cheek. We've created. We've started to create the cheek, okay? Which is really kind of a a neat thing. Let's bring this out a little bit. Okay. Bring this one out a little bit. Okay. We're going to save our work because it's, we'd love to save our work. Control S. We save our work early and often. Now, let me go back to NumPad 1. If you didn't follow what I just did right there, if you look, this is these are your viewports up here. See these top four little uh, circles? these top four spheres that I'm hovering over. So this is the wireframe viewport. If you ever want to be in wireframe and see through your model, you, you just select wireframe. This is solid mode, and this is kind of the default, you know, basic clay setting of 3D modeling. Uh, this is a, a material preview. Uh, okay, so this is, and materials were, you know what? Okay, so materials are something we're definitely going to get into. And you're really going to need to know and know well, and we'll we'll take it piece by piece. But just to kind of whet the appetite, show you what a material is. Um, click this button down here. So we come to our properties panel, and then we click the materials property down here. It's this. It's the red uh, beach ball looking icon. Then we're going to add new right here. Plus new. Plus new. Right. Base color, and then pick a base color. I'm going to pick red just because it's quick and easy. And look what happens to our model. Okay, we have added a material to our model just like that, quick and easy, and we made it red. Now, the nodes are a whole nother world in Blender, and they're really fun and really fascinating, and we're definitely going to get there. And these, uh, this, you know, we're, we're kind of like Alice opening a door into Wonderland, and that, that that's really what this is. Nodes are their own separate interface and world, and there's all there are loads and loads of tutorials, and you should definitely it, it's a it's a skill. It is uh, something that you're going to have to learn eventually. We're definitely going to do it in this particular tutorial series, not now. Uh, but nodes are the thing that make 3D meshes look like something. You know, you can you can make it. You can use a node to make something look like real grass, or real sky, or gold, or shiny metal, or rust, or get some crazy gloss reflection, um, or camouflage, or you know, an eggshell, or whatever. If you're messing around with materials and you want your model to look a certain way, like a real thing, or even like a stylized thing, but a thing nonetheless. You're going to use nodes, and we're definitely going to use nodes. Not now. I'm just kind of showing you what this is and how to use it. Okay. So to get rid of it, very very easy. Just hit the X button, pop, and it goes away. Okay. We're going to come back to materials, but I just, you know, I like like I said, I and th this you might already know what this is. You might not. Um, if you don't know, hopefully you learn. So these are your properties. This is your materials. This is where we add materials. And these are your this, these are your viewports up here, okay? Your viewport shadings, okay? Now let's uh, let's kind of round out our shape. It's kind of it's a little jagged. So I'm gonna with my middle mouse button, I'm gonna rotate like this. We haven't really talked about middle mouse button rotations yet, 
if you go to hit numpad one front view numpad three side view but if you want to get you know a rotated angle hit the hit the middle mouse button and you can rotate around your model at really any angle so get to an angle where you can see the curvature of the brow line and right now it's really kind of jagged so we want to straighten that out we're going to do so like this Maybe bring that back a little bit Maybe out a little bit okay and then we're going to bring this one back and you can see we're trying to round this out okay just round it out like that and if you're if you're watching me and then going to you know you can build yours as i'm building mine okay um you feel free to pause and then do it and then come back if if you need to but for the most part you know build it out yourself and then you see where that once was jagged now that's a little more round there's there's a little more shape to this that looks foreheadish right here pull this up a little bit pull this up a little bit down and then let's bring this the bring this out to meet him bring this out to meet him So. Okay, and you can kind of see how we're building the brow, how we're building our character's brow. We're kind of adding, we're not adding any additional geometry to our model, which is great. We're using, you know, we're using the minimum amount of geometry possible. And now we're just, we're just shaping our model, trying to build out a form. Okay, and you really want that curvature, that, that think of it like a crescent moon, right? Okay, and that looks okay. So you, you can see we kind of got how we're, we're building the brow line, and then obviously, let me go into wireframe mode. You know, we're going to build out the eye eventually, but so you can see how the face, what was you know a few minutes ago, just some flat geometry on a screen, now has the shape of a nose, the curvature of a brow and the curves of a cheek line. I mean, it's still really jagged, and we have a lot of work to do, but slow and steady wins the race on this one. Okay, one thing I do want to do is I want this to be uniformly flat, okay? See how it's kind of, like here is, it's not completely flat. It's, a you know, this vertice, this vertex is a little bit higher than this vertex, which is a little bit lower than this vertex. I want these to be uniform. Okay, so I just, this is this is good to know. So I just hit alt click, okay? And I wanted the horizontal line, but it gave me the vertical line. Just click it again, and it gives you the, the horizontal line, okay? Now, to flatten this out, you wanna scale it along the axis and then hit zero, okay? Let me say that again. I want all of these to be the same on the Z axis, okay? So I'm gonna hit scale, S, Z, for Z axis and then zero. And you see that happen? And then I'm hit enter. Enter locks it in place. So did you see what just happened right there? Now these are uniformly flat. Okay, I'm gonna hit control Z. I'm going to save with control S 
And now just to show you that again, I'm hit control Z. So let's watch this again. See how they're, you know, it looks flat to the, to the naked eye, but we want to be precise here. So we're going to scale S on the Z axis, Z zero, and they all go flat. Okay. Control Z do it again. Why? Because repetition is the mother of skill. Say that again. Repetition is the mother of skill. So we're going to do this again, scale on the Z zero and they all go flat. Okay. So now when we extrude up from here, these will all be on the same level, which is, which is just a good thing to do. We're, we're going to have a geometrically sound model. Okay. And let's actually, let's pull this up a little bit just cause we can, we're going to extend, bring it up. See, I mean, so, and look, we talked about following the, the template, following our reference image here. Is there really any difference to here? You know, once we've, once we've crested the brow, right, we'll, we'll call it there and then just finish rounding out the face. Flip into side view. Come back. Um, let's build on, let's bring our nose down a little bit. Okay. So in order to drag the nose down, let's select these two vertices. Okay. Now you can either click one and then shift select the other one. Or if you want, you can just, you can just click and drag over two of them and they'll, they'll both select. And then I'm going to move it down on the Z axis. Okay. You want to bring that down a little bit. We're going to pull it in along the Y axis. Okay. Like that. Yeah. I think we're going over. That's a good place to stop. We'll pick it up in the next uh, episode. Okay. Save your work. We talked about the loop cut tool, covered loop cut tool, we covered viewport shaders, we covered materials a little bit, and we started to build out and round out our face, building out the nose a little bit, building out the brow, building out the cheek. In the next video, we will we'll pick this up. Like I said, we're going super slow. This is for beginners. Anybody can just pick up the software and do this, okay? And if it's too fast, let me know where it's fast. I really want anyone, because everyone should have 3D modeling should not only be accessible to design students and people that study 3d and do three, just anyone who wants to do this should be able to right? like, this is, this is for that, uh, person. So we're going to, like I said, we're going to go super slow and that's totally fine. So get up, get a stretch, get a bend, uh, do a crunch or a push up or a pull up, get some water, stay hydrated, come back and, uh, we'll keep going. Control S and I'll see you in the next video.